Hi, this is Dr. Robert Norman. Glad you're here. This is the Brain Skin Connection series, the outer brain, the incredible power of the brain skin connection. This is from the Norman Center for Neurodermatology. We're investigating the interactions between the brain and the skin in relationship to disorders such as melanoma, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, autism, neurodermatitis, and other neurocutaneous diseases. What is our goal here is to translate skin brain research into effective behavioral strategies that prevent disease, promote healing, provide treatments, and enhance well-being across the lifespan. Skin is the largest organ of the human body, which perpetually performs homeostatic barrier function with respect to outward loss of water. Due to its easy accessibility and large surface area, it plays a major role in drug delivery. Many compounds such as sunscreens, insect repellents, antiseptics are meant to remain on the skin surface. We call those topical, of course, <clears throat> while others penetrate the skin layers transdermal to target sites within or just below the skin. Transdermal is a route of administration wherein active ingredients are delivered across the skin for systemic distribution. So on the skin, into the body, and TDDS, transdermal drug delivery systems, play a major role in managing dermal infections and attaining sustained plasma drug concentration. It's usually in the form of a patch or an ointment, and we'll talk about other ways that drugs can be delivered in the circulation via the skin. According to an article by Prozenitz and Langer, transdermal delivery represents an attractive alternative to oral delivery of drugs and is poised to provide an alternative to hypodermic injection tools which of course is a huge concern, especially in fields like dermatology, in which people have a lot of needle phobia. For thousands of years, people have placed substances on the skin for therapeutic effects. And in the modern era, a variety of topical formulations have been developed to treat local indications. The first transdermal system for systemic therapy or delivery was a three-day patch that delivered scopolamine to treat motion sickness. This was approved for use in the United States in 1979. How can we deliver life enhancing therapy to the brain via the skin? So a decade later, when we're still on this path to try to figure out about transdermals becoming these blockbusters, um, it raised the profile of transdermal delivery in medicine and the public in general. There are dozens of transdermal systems, estradiol, fentanyl, lidocaine, and testosterone. There's combination patches that contain more than one drug for contraception and hormone replacement, and other ones for endophoretic and ultrasonic delivery systems for analgesia, which are very common. It's estimated that more than 1 billion transdermal patches are currently manufactured each year for cosmetic, topical, and transdermal delivery systems. Something else I'd like to mention with this DMSO, it's been used in the veterinary field uh, as well as uh, with Homo sapiens. Um, it's got a long history and uh, as a penetration enhancer in topical pharmaceutical formulations. It tends to be that the 90% solution, actually 70 to 90% has been the most effective strength across the skin and lower concentrations are sufficient across other membranes so they can be used but the sweet spot is a 70 to 90 percent. It can carry other drugs across with it uh, through the membranes, uh, faring certain drugs such as morphine, penicillin, steroids, cortisone, and even insulin. So it depends on the molecular weight, the shape, and the electrochemistry of the molecules. The property enables DMSO to act as a transdermal drug delivery system that lowers the risk of infection occurring when skin is penetrated. It's been used for a, a large variety of topical analgesics in particular. It's safe, effective, uh, and hydrophilic and lipophilic medications are often enhanced by providing localized drug delivery by DMSO. Another thing is called nootropics, smart drugs, brain boosters, memory enhancing drugs. You see a lot of these in the general media, and these are available uh, in a wide variety of products. 
uh, although the definition is pretty much up to debate, they are often manufactured as what are called stacks or substances that include many different ingredients that interact in complex ways. So examples are B vitamins, vitamins A, C, D, E, ginseng, uh, ginkgo biloba, medicinal mushrooms, caffeine, fish oil, and creatinine. What about treating brain cancers that metastasize from the skin? Stem cells loaded with oncolytic viruses show promising effects in preclinical models for targeting skin cancer metastasis to the brain. There was a study at Brigham and Women's Hospital in which investigators have a potential solution for how to kill tumor cells that have metastasized to the brain. The team developed cancer killing viruses that can deliver stem cells via the carotid artery and applied them to metastatic tumors in the brain of clinically relevant mouse models. So we hope this can be transferred in due time with great studies to humans. Metastatic brain tumors that are often from lung, breast, or skin cancers are the most commonly observed tumors within the brain and account for about 40% of advanced melanoma metastasis. The current therapeutic options for such patients are quite limited, particularly when there are many metastasis, Dr. Shaw says, who directs the Brigham and Women's Department of Neurosurgery, stem cell therapeutics and imaging. The results are the first to provide insight into ways of targeting multiple brain metastatic deposits with stem cell loaded oncolytic viruses that specifically kill dividing tumor cells. Now what about lasers? Lasers is a very hot topic within the idea of facilitating drug delivery. Uh, can be very effective for drug permeation enhancement approaches. And the controlled disruption and ablation of the stratum corneum of the skin, which is the predominant barrier for drug delivery, can be achieved by the use of lasers. The healthcare industry of today is focusing on developing minimally invasive techniques for diagnosis as well as treatment of ailments. Now, one of the most promising developments in the field involves the marriage of the latest nanomaterial science and robotics technology with biological knowledge. Nanorobotics are also called nanobots. We have seen many revolutions in the healthcare industry from the invention of the first vaccine to much more modern equipment like MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. In the following decades, however, biologists and engineers hope to trigger the most significant revolution in the history of medicine. For example, one of these are nanoscopic bots that crawl or swim inside your body, which will no longer be science fiction. Looking for effective ways of diagnosing ailments, detecting diseases, and analyzing changes in the body without having to physically cut open and observe the subject. X-rays and MRIs provide a view of the inside from the outside. We can gather previously inconceivable amount of data without opening up the subject effectively and reliably. And what if we could gather the data of the inside from the inside itself? The data will be more accurate and much more reliable. The treatment as a result will also be highly specific and as the diagnosis is more accurate, it will be custom made for the particular subject. Nanobots could be used to treat the cancers in the central nervous system also. They could also be used as implants, replacing damaged neurons in some patients. Nanobots will also be able to be, perform neurosurgeries as well as surgeries of the brain with a high success rate in prevention, hopefully, and trying to stop the necessity of drilling a hole in the skull to gain access to the brain. They can also be used to help people suffering from motor neuron diseases such as paralysis. Once injected into the patient, they can locate themselves to specific places in the brain and pick up impulses which would normally be delivered to the body's motor neurons. These impulses can be used to drive external prosthetics such as robotic arms and legs and would help a lot of people to overcome their disabilities. As with all decisions, we have to think about the ethics and what can happen with these various technologies. In James Bond's final scene, the newest movie, No Time to Die, 
the villain Safin engineered uh, Heracles nanobots to kill people that shared specific DNA. The nanobots, as Q, who is one of the characters, makes clear, are permanent and can't be removed from one system. So Safin gets uh, a sample of some of the characters' strand of hair, uh, which contains their specific DNA, and infects them with these genetically encoded uh, nanobots. And what happens is uh, it makes Bond make his final decision in the end of the movie which you'll have to see. Could nanobots like these be created genetically encoded that could readily kill by a scratch of the skin or by some other mechanism? Another ethical dilemma for the world of Homo sapiens, what is the next right thing to do in our world? So many of these drugs can be delivered via the skin, whether they're nanobots um, and therapies, whether they're nanobots or any other mechanism, but we have to think what would be the best thing for us to use to enhance human life. Using transdermal stem cells, laser techniques, and other mechanisms to treat the skin and brain have attracted increasing attention and will continue to grow over time. My next talk will be on vitamin D and the skin.